welcome back to Ken Landa. Let's talk about diabetes in general and specifically Jardians, a relatively new drug to treat diabetes. Diabetes, common disease, more than 35 or 40 million people in the United States have diabetes, more than 50 million people have pre-diabetes, and because the newer, very expensive medicines used to treat diabetes, horrible expense for this condition. It's estimated that now we spend somewhere around $350 billion each year to treat diabetes, a condition that for many people, for 90% of the people, might be better controlled by diet and exercise. The Centers for Disease Control says in the United States right now, among people over age 20, that one in nine have diabetes and one in three have a pre-diabetic condition. Well, we know diabetes increases your risk of developing premature death, of developing cardiovascular-related death, of developing kidney failure, and the thought always has been that if you reduce the blood sugar, that you can prevent some of these complications. Well, unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case. People with diabetes, even people who have good control of their diabetes, die at an accelerated rate because of heart attack and stroke and because of cardiovascular disease in general. So, against that, there's diet and exercise to get rid of the diabetes, or you can take some medicines. And increasingly, we're turning to those drugs that are highly advertised on the television. One of them happens to be Jardiance. Jardiance was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in August of 2014 as an oral medication available in 10 or 25 milligram pills taken either by itself or in addition to other anti-diabetic medicines. You take it in the morning, doesn't matter whether you take it with a meal or without. The way it works is it causes the kidney that filters the sugar, and the sugar tends to be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. Well, when you take Jardiance, the sugar isn't reabsorbed again, it goes out in the urine. When it goes out in the urine, obviously the sugar has calories, you lose the calories because they go out instead of into your body so you don't become extra fat. You lose some weight. When you lose some weight, you lose some blood pressure. So your blood pressure falls a little bit. And that seems to be relatively good. You get some side effects. That's certainly, certainly possible with the medication. So as you take the drug, it causes more sugar to get into the urine. When it goes out, it can increase the likelihood of a genital yeast infection associated with uh, foul-smelling, discharge, redness, itching. Happens in women, to some extent in men. We know that can lead to severe urinary tract infections because so much sugar is going out of the body and sugar carries with it some water. We know you can have polyuria, you pee all the time. A lot of people dislike that so intensely, they stop taking the medicine, they want something else. If you urinate all the time, you can become dehydrated, especially if you're taking a water pill, especially if you're on a low-salt diet. Your blood pressure can go down even more than you want. You can become what we call hypotensive because so much urine is being lost. That's a problem, especially, again, in the elderly people, people who are taking medicines to reduce the blood pressure, especially a diuretic. And when these situations exist, then especially if you're an elderly individual, you stand up and your blood pressure falls down too much, well, then you might become dizzy, you might faint, and you might break a bone. That's obviously significant. Well, it can elevate your blood potassium, it can elevate your blood cholesterol, and it can lead to an increased incidence of fractures, especially in postmenopausal women, especially in the arm. We know there's a condition known as ketoacidosis that tends to occur in type 1 diabetes or the insulin-dependent diabetics, those are usually the thin kids, or the people who developed diabetes when they were children. Well, in that case, the sugar tends to be very high, say over 500. Well, in the Jardiance-induced ketoacidosis, it seems that the sugar oftentimes is less than 250, so the sugar is thought to be okay, but you all of a sudden start to develop nausea, abdominal distress and pain, some vomiting, some malaise, some shortness of breath, especially if you're not taking in calories, you have some kind of acute febrile illness, you perhaps have a pancreatic disorder, or you're drinking too much alcohol. And diabetic ketoacidosis obviously can be a significant problem. You can develop a hypersensitivity reaction, hives, urticaria. You can develop swelling around the mouth, angioedema. 
And sometimes your skin can slough off in a condition we know as exfoliation. Well, kidney disease is a significant complication, fortunately in a very small number of people, but kidney failure does result from taking Jardians, and it would appear that some people will develop kidney stones. We know that if you take the Jardians, it's going to increase the amount of phosphate in the bloodstream, and if it increases the amount of phosphate in the bloodstream, that's going to adversely affect the activity of vitamin D and parathyroid hormone, that's going to cause the bones to be reabsorbed. You're going to lose bone mass, and then we talked about the increased incidence of fracture. While the drug is not marketed for weight loss, people who take Jardians will lose weight because remember, the sugar is going out in the urine, and if you lose the weight, your blood pressure will go down. We worry about heart-related disease on any of these anti-diabetic medicines, so the Food and Drug Administration mandates that the companies that produce the anti-diabetic medicine have to do studies to show whether there's an adverse effect on the heart. And the good news is that Jardians not only doesn't seem to be associated with heart disease, it can reduce the likelihood of certain kind of cardiovascular diseases, and it reduces the death from cardiovascular disease, the likelihood of sudden cardiac death. Well, studies have not yet been done for Invokana, a related drug, and it haven't been done for Farsiga, again, a related drug. Those will take several more years in order to be finished. We know that the study looking specifically at Jardians showed there was a reduction in all-cause mortality by about 3%, and a reduction in the deaths from cardiovascular disease by, again, about 2 2.5%, but it didn't protect against all cardiovascular disease, didn't reduce the incidence of heart attacks or sudden uh, silent heart attacks or stroke, either fatal or non-fatal stroke, didn't reduce the likelihood of hospitalization for unstable angina or the need for bypass surgery. Well, how does the drug work? Again, it probably works not because it controls the sugar so well, but because it controls the weight and controls the blood pressure, reduces the blood pressure on the top number, the systolic, by about four or five millimeters, and it reduces the bottom number by about one or two millimeters, and that is very important. And also, it seems to be associated with a lowering or a reduction in the amount of sodium in the system, and sodium seems to drive the blood pressure. So if you can reduce the sodium, hopefully you're going to be able to reduce the likelihood of suffering from hypertension. Well, how well does the drug work? It works okay. It doesn't work any better, any worse than any of the other drugs. All of the drugs are sort of standardized in diabetes. All of the drugs that we talk about are going to reduce the glycosylated hemoglobin and hemoglobin A1c by eight-tenths of one percent. That's sort of standard. Do they get your hemoglobin A1c, or the glycosylated hemoglobin, to less than seven? That's sort of the gold standard. That's where you'd like it to be. 40% of the people, that means 60% of the people, it's not going to be enough. You will lose weight, you will lose some numbers on the blood pressure. We know that if you study the Jardians, if you go to the Google and just type in Jardians, you're going to find almost as many lawyers' ads as you do informative studies on Jardians. And the reason is that the drug is the subject of an awful lot of lawsuits. Lawsuits because of kidney disease and heart attacks and this ketoacidosis situation. People claim that the drug companies knew about some of the problems and didn't warn the people that the drugs are inappropriate and improper. That's a separate issue. We know that the drug seems to work just as well as other kind of anti-diabetic medicines. It's more expensive than a lot of them. The health insurers would rather you not take these newer drugs that you would stick with the standard older drugs. Actually, the drug companies would rather you go and diet and exercise, and hopefully over a period of time they're going to reimburse people who go and join the gym or who use the gym, people who lose weight, because that's what you really need to do. How much does Jardians cost? Well, Jardians costs about $15 a day. And remember, in many people, that's not the only anti-diabetic medicine you're going to be taking. You're going to add another $10 or more on for another kind of a pill. So, the important thing to realize is that here, Jardian seems to be a pretty good pill. Seems to work 
okay, doesn't work any better than any of the other kind of medicines for the overwhelming majority of people, and it is fairly expensive, and not only is it expensive, even though it's been on the market for a while, the price keeps going up. So think of that the next time you pass by the donut tray or the candy tray. Think about that when you have the option of sitting down or standing up and getting on the treadmill, going for a walk. That's how we would like to take care of diabetes, not with all of these medicines that are so expensive. We want to get back to a point where people are of lower body weight and people who exercise more. Those are the people who are going to find that the likelihood of cardiovascular disease is going to be significantly reduced. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.